it is hard to imagine, but it is a part of our American history. 331 years ago, right now, this very month, the accusations of witchcraft began in Salem, Massachusetts. More than 200 people were accused of being witches. 30 were found guilty by trial. 19 were hung to death. Others died in jail. And one poor guy basically died because he was crushed to death. They placed him in a position where they're putting pressure on him and the pressure was such that it actually caused his death. That was so he would confess. Now we look back at this little piece of American history and well, um, what can we say? Yet there's another side to this tragic story. These communities where this was erupting were made up of people who went to church every Sunday. These people, including the accusers, thought they were doing God's work. And parts of New England were swept up into this, into this fervor. The colonial government was the final word as it outlawed such killings and stopped this behavior. Yet there's something to observe. The people thought they were going God's way. They thought they were doing what God wanted them to do. Get rid of those wretched witches or who they thought were writ witches. How often do people of God stray from going God's way? How often do we take off on our own ways expecting God to simply bend to our desires? We heard a few moments ago from the prophet Isaiah, the 58th chapter. God has the prophet raise the issues. Shout out, don't hold back. Lift your voice like a trumpet. The Lord God wants the prophet to be very clear. Announce to my people their rebellion to the house of Jacob, their sins. Put it before them what they're doing. Help them see what they're really about. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinances of God. What we hear is these people thought they were going God's way, they were making their offerings, they were lifting up their supplications, yet they were sinning. They weren't being faithful to God. They ask me of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast but you do not see? They wondered why God wasn't responding, why God wasn't pleased. <coughs> why do we fast but you do not see? Why humble ourselves but you do not notice? Here's the problem. Look, you serve your own interests. You're doing what you want, not what God wants. You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting, the way you're acting won't, won't work. Is the fast that I choose a day to humble oneself? God's raising the question to God's people. Do they think God doesn't see what's going on? Do they think that God doesn't care? Then listen, what else is said? Is this is what God's laying out is this is what I want people. It's not the fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice. 
to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke? Is it not that you share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. The people of God were doing their own thing, doing what they wanted. The people were not going God's way. So what is God's way? It is a way of life liberated by the grace of God in Jesus Christ that allows us to love God and love our neighbor. That our lives are not lived out of selfish ambition and desire. That we're not operating out, operating out of, I think, as though we're God. God's desire is that we seek to break the bonds of injustice today, to let the oppressed go free today, to feed the hungry today, to house the homeless today, to clothe the naked today, to be part of the human community today. Here in the 21st century, we have not escaped this human folly. We live in just as a crazy a time as those back in the 1690s or the people of God at the time of Isaiah. And we live all kinds of twisted contradictions at the same time. We talk pro-life, but we support the death penalty. We talk family values, yet support gambling, drinking, and more. We support biblical values, yet reject welcoming the stranger and caring for the alien in our midst. These are not political statements. I want that to be clear. I didn't just make an endorsement of any political statement. It's rather an example of how we humans struggle in the real world. And we struggle with hard issues. And we're called to be God's people in the midst of that. We want God's way. Yet often we just compromise over to human ways. We want to impose our ideas, our morals, our priorities. Yet God's call is for God to be God and not us. We can easily become like Puritans in New England or the people of God at the time of Isaiah. We might even think that we are doing God's righteous work. We might self-justify our point of view, our actions. Well, people, today is a day of reckoning. It's Ash Wednesday. It is a day of reckoning. It's a time for the disciples of Jesus Christ to hear the call and live the life of repentance. Now remember, repentance is metanoia in the Greek. It literally means to have a change of heart and mind. The call of God for repentance is for us to have a change of our heart and mind and to return to God's way as the way. Lent is a journey of returning to the Lord. This is a journey made up of prayer. Not just saying we want prayer someplace, not just expecting the guy with the collar to be praying, but for each of us to be in prayer. To use these 40 days to actually spend time with God in prayer, more than just thank you, Lord, for this food today, but to be in conversation with God. And remember, conversation has two parts. One is the spoken, what we're saying. The other is the listening, waiting on the Lord, trusting that God will speak to us. 
Lent is a time of fasting. There's a good one we love. Fasting. Of letting something go or taking something up for a reason. Now, it's popular to give something up for Lent. But let me give you a word of advice. If you are doing that just as self-punishment, don't do it at all. The point of fasting is to intentionally change part of our behavior, give up or take up something, so as to draw us closer to God, to seek God's way deeper in our life. So for this Lent, maybe consider um, giving up your gossip. Giving up overspending. Giving up overscheduling. Choose something that's going to draw you closer to God. That's the point. In the midst of that, you'll also discover you'll, be love, discover you'll be loving your neighbor a lot more, too. Lent is a journey of works of love. Intentional actions on our part to be the hands of Christ in the world, to be the feet of Christ in our neighborhood, to be the heart of Christ for those we encounter. Works of love span from giving of our wealth for God's work in the world to um, getting our hands dirty, mowing somebody else's yard, fixing dinner for somebody, washing someone's clothes. Today, we've heard the prophet's words being spoken to us. Hear the summons of our God to repent for our lives to be ones of repentance. In these 40 days, make the hard journey of honest examination of your life. And as needed, change your mind. Allow your heart to be changed, to go God's way. God's way leads us to the cross where God meets us profoundly loving us. God's way leads us to the resurrected life. Lent leads us to the joy of Easter. But before we rush to Easter, and we have a tendency to want to do that, let's begin our Lenten journey. Sisters and brothers, let the words sink in today. Remember who you are. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Let us reckon with the truth and go God's way. Amen.